first patient who died and had had magnetic resonance images done prior to death broke it open, totally broke it open for us. And that patient obviously was herniating. His brain was swollen on day one, it was massively more swollen on day two, four hours before he died. And he clearly, you could see the, ev the, the radiologic evidence of the brain being forced down through the frame and magnum. We never would have seen them if we'd stuck with the autopsies. We never, ever would have figured out what was killing these kids. But that was one case. And since this is science, we needed to support this new hypothesis with repeated MRIs over the course of several malaria seasons. And because radiology is an inherently quasi-subjective assessment on the part of a single radiologist, we needed to be able to compare the findings. So the Lexmark software that allowed us to transfer the images from Malawi, where we had one radiologist, to Michigan State University, where we had the second radiologist, was completely critical. I think the most compelling thing I can say about the utility of the VNA is that I, as the doctor taking care of these kids and scrutinizing their images every day and using the data on a regular basis, am completely unaware of it. It just, it just works flawlessly. It has never failed, and I didn't even, I wouldn't even know it was there. So going forward, the way that we'd like to use the Lexmark VNA technology is to support an interventional clinical trial. We hope that the trial will identify a treatment for these kids at highest risk of, mortal of dying. So that's the 38% the mortality in kids with severely increased brain volume. We'd like to zero in on that group. and. The conduct of the clinical trial is critically dependent on the, the Lexmark VNA technology because we need to be whizzing images back and forth between Malawi and the U.S. for the radiological interpretation. Mm -hmm.